How can we trust the fictional justice system? Depending on what you've been through in your life, how you've been a victim of certain circumstance and others' decisions to come against you, and then the policing for profit. Hi! I am Holly, and I'm sharing a part of my journey to bring courage and inspire you on yours. And I've been thinking a lot lately about where the system has gone and where it started and the claims of why it was even here in the first place. And when I think back to how many times I've I've had to seriously consider using restraining orders, attempting to use the system to keep myself safe. And I think back to the very first time that I ever needed to consider this. And I was about 18, I'm not sure if I was quite 19. I had just graduated high school, and back then it was like ICQ, instant messaging, that was the messenger that a lot of us used, ICQ, MySpace, stuff like that, or people emailed you directly. And so this one guy that I went to high school with randomly started emailing me, and I have the type of personality that I get along with anybody. It, it doesn't matter your background, what you've done. I get along with everyone. And so this, this guy that we all went to high school with, everybody knew him. He was different in the way of there was something off. You knew he wasn't the same as the rest of us. And... There was just something, and none of us really knew exactly. We just knew that you wouldn't trust your children with them. Let's put it that way. <laughs> and so he started emailing me, and it turned to a point of stalker, like very scary stalker vibes where he wouldn't stop. And how he even knew certain things or where where I'd be. It was just weird, right? And so I called the police because I was like, I need like a restraining order or, and they would do no thing. They couldn't. There had been no harm caused. They would only do something once this guy attacked me or, th or would like physically threaten me in some type of way or once he kidnapped me, that's the point where they would do something. Because then there would be harm caused. There were a few other times in my life that I had to not really threaten, but almost that I would get restraining orders on exes because they became obs obsessive. And it was, it put me in a, a very extremely uncomfortable position where I would start to feel unsafe. I already knew I couldn't trust calling people who really couldn't do anything anyways. These fictional corporations who are supposed to be peacekeepers and are supposed to be working for us. And then you look at the people that they actually fine and charge and when you're called a constable working for a corporation when you're actually giving a ticket you're now a complainee so you go from being a constable of this fictional corporation who's supposed to protect and serve you take an oath to now being a complainee because you are claiming 
that you've witnessed an injury. You've witnessed someone being injured. So you complain to the courts and the courts have to find you guilty no matter what it is. That's why you're either guilty or you, you negotiate the fine that you pay. When they give you a notice to replace your light bulb, your headlight that doesn't work, or to do, do something, now they're a peace officer. And so prior to them even arresting you, they call themselves peace officers. And then when they give you a notice to comply to, they're a peace officer. The only time they will help you is when there's an injured party. And yet they'll pull you over because they don't like something they see and then they will cause you injury. They use their intimidation tactics to cause injury to us. You see Trudeau all the time say, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I gave my mom hundreds of thousands of dollars from a charity. There's, there is, the system needs to go. It fully needs to crumble and it's taken itself out already because of all the fraud and perjury that it commits. It's supposed to be there working for us and it doesn't. It works for these fictional corporations to keep us under lock and key so they can move us around like chattel, cattle. And when we step out of line and we say something they don't like, then what? How can you be living in no man's land where God holds the title to all the land and we are here as caretakers and custodians of Mother Earth and that they have created this fictional system which covers it covers the, the facts really it's the facts that they're hiding they create all this coloring and fiction and using adjectives, adjectives and verbs and and this is in, in public schools, they teach you creative writing. They get your imagination to flow, which is great. Like, imagination is great and vivid imagination can be extremely beneficial. When you're, when you're a child, that's what you see is your imagination, your creativity. And then they play on that. So that when you actually see their creativity and their fiction... You think that it's fiction or non-fiction, that it's factual. Why do you need a liar to, or a lawyer to read your documentation, your legal jargon? Because <laughs> it makes no sense. So how can you, how can you be in a, be in a position where you may not even feel safe in your community. Maybe you're a victim of abuse. I was raped three times by people I trusted. I never laid charges on one of them. I didn't want... <sighs> when you know what you have to go through in order to even come to the fact of... Or trying to get people to believe you on what happened... And then you're, you're created to be the nuisance. You just shy away, right? And you think about all these kids now. In 2019, 2019, Kids Help Phone had 1.9 million calls. Kids Help Phone. I called Kids Help Phone when I was about 16 years old. There was no help on the other end of the line when I called no help. 
I might have been 18. Somewhere between 16 and 18. I've, I've regretted even making that phone call. 2019, 1.9 million calls to Kids Help Phone. 2020? When they put everyone on lockdown? When the parents couldn't work because the kids couldn't go to school? Now these families who had never been in this close quarters together for, for much more than a couple hours at a time. These abusive men coming and beating their women and children. Over 4 million, 4 million phone calls to Kids Help Phone in 2020. They had to hire more people. To, they had to take more volunteers to answer the phones. They didn't even have enough people to answer the phones. And that the justice system turned to those people who wouldn't wear a mask and tried to force vaccinate everybody. And they went and tried to get the people that were going on the convoy and the rallies. What is our justice system here for? In the Netherlands, in these, these countries where there is no law, you are taught how to work through your ethics and your values and morals. And you are taught to do no harm. And you are taught to not, not trespass. And these countries don't need these intimidating thugs walking around with seven weapons to put you into a fear state, almost cause seizures as you're driving down the road, as you're traveling. We travel, we run no commerce, we, we're not commercial, we're living men and women, and, and many of us have these blinding spells placed over us so we, we can't remember. And then so when someone speaks as I do, in fact, I pray that some of my words hit and, and activate dormant parts of your DNA who have been laying there begging and pleading energetically for you to just wake up. Wake up and remove the veil so you can see this is such a beauty-filled place and we've put way too much trust and faith in the system which was only placed here like after the wars when they said income tax is temporary until we get back on our feet maybe a couple years here we are over 100 years later and everybody's still paying taxes not everybody there's been a lot of people this year refuse because they see it for what it is it's voluntary and unless you live in the federal area of our, well, Ottawa, let's say, in Canada, it's Ottawa. So when you live in, there's a, a section of downtown Can Ottawa, and that's the federal property. Outside of those streets is provincial. If you, when you live there, you're supposed to pay taxes. You're considered a federal worker and federal employee. You pay taxes. Everybody else is voluntary. And, and people ignorantly continue to consent to this bullshit. That's all it is. It's fuckery. And many of us who see through the veil have been working at finding solutions rather than continually focusing on the problems because the problems are just distractions. What have you been doing for the past four years? What have you learned? How has your life shifted since 2020? Because if it hasn't shifted at all, you are the issue. You are the problem. You are what's holding us back.
There are solutions, and the system is taking itself out. The amount of fraud and perjury committed unlawfully under the great mystery, the one above all others, a prime source creator, it's no more. What was is no more. Turn off the TV, get out into nature. <sighs> Breathe in those microbes and fight insides and live in joy. Get out of your fear state and see. Pray that the veil is removed and that the eyes and ears of your heart can be opened to your internal guidance system, which can lead you to all of the solutions, all of the joy, all of the love that you've ever wished for. We are here and we are the ones we've been waiting for. Mwah. Sending bliss to each and every one of you.